A county in Ireland that five years ago didn't have a single distillery is an unlikely location for some of the greatest innovation in the Irish whiskey world today. But a small county in the sunny southeast of Ireland is leading a whiskey revolution. In this episode, we're off to Waterford. Welcome to episode number 19 of Stories and Sips, the second episode of 2019, and we're heading due east from the last episode where we went behind the scenes at the Old Middleton Distillery. This week, we're an hour's drive from Middleton in a county whose name and capital city to most Americans, and especially to generations of Irish Americans, is synonymous with the famous crystal that for years was the standard gift for weddings in Ireland and the United States. Now, I don't have any whiskey from Waterford to drink, so what I did instead was triangulate my virtual position in Waterford with the closest distillery to Waterford that's distilling their own whiskey, and then my own whiskey collection. And lo and behold, I found myself back at Middleton again. And so I'm toasting this episode with a nice, generous pour of green spot in my lovely Tua Irish whiskey glass. So slodge it. I am, however, representing Waterford by having this random piece of water crystal in the shot full of M&Ms. So there's that. Now, my own connections to Waterford actually go back years from childhood trips to Tremor and Ardmore beaches, and more recently, cliff walks past the Cliff House Hotel in Ardmoor, uh, hikes up the Knockmeal Down Mountains with my dad, who climbs them regularly, and at 72 years of age is showing no signs of slowing down, thankfully. But I do wish he'd slow down at least once to allow me to catch up with him, but we're not here to climb mountains. We're here to talk about whiskey and to convince our American friends watching to come to Ireland by showcasing our country, our distilleries, our whiskey, our people and our stories. Now, Waterford doesn't feature on the average American's travel itinerary as often as it should. But you could do worse than to start your trip to Ireland in the Viking founded Waterford city. Add that to your travel itinerary. Now, on the edge of the city is a building that's been quenching the locals thirst for more than 200 years. Starting as a spirit merchant in 1797, Mr. Henry Downs originally imported sherry and uh, port, and he was one of the many spirit bottlers that we've mentioned in previous episodes that were uh, throughout the country in the 1800s. Now in the 1960s, his descendants turned the building into a pub, and today John de Bromhead is the sixth generation to be involved with the business. Now, in addition to bottling port and sherry, Downs's, as it's known locally, has been bottling their own whiskey for years. And at one time, there were 10 different Downs blends, uh, their own whiskey, on the shelves of the bar. And Downs number nine was a particular favourite of the local parish priest. And as everybody knows, the priests only go for the best stuff. So over time, the other blends were abandoned in favour of Downs number nine. It's still bottled to this day and available in Downs's, but according to the owners, as of yesterday, stocks are low. So if you're going to try it, get in there fast. Now the bar hasn't changed much since the 1960s and why would it? Doesn't it have everything you need? A dark, cozy, whiskey fueled setting to share a few stories and a few sips with friends. It's old school Ireland. It's unchanged on the inside and completely unaffected by the changes happening outside. And there's comfort in knowing that some things will always be the same, and that's Downs's. But not more than a five minute walk from Downs's is a foreboding building on the banks of the River Shore, whose occupants believe that some things shouldn't stay the same. In 2014, a former Diageo brewery came up for sale, and a former Scotch whiskey distiller saw it as an opportunity to do something very special. Advised by a former colleague that the southeast of Ireland grew the best malting barley in the world, Mark Rainier made the brewery home to Waterford Distillery. It's here that Mark and his team have decided to make life harder for themselves, to spend more money, to wait longer, and to take a bigger chance than many other distilleries. At the Waterford Distillery, they're making a big bet. And to give some context to what this bet is, Mark believes in a thing called terroir. It's a French term literally translated as earth or soil, and it's a word used to refer to that, that natural, the natural environmental factors that contribute to wine. Things like soil, topography, climate. It's all about the specificity of a place. The idea is that as these factors change, so too will the final output. 
And the more you know about these factors and work in harmony with them, the more unique a product can be derived. Now, Waterford Distillery is uniquely applying this thinking to Irish whiskey, and a large sign hangs on the distillery referring cleverly to Ireland's terroir. So Mark and his team are making a bet that terroir exists in the whiskey world just as it does in the wine world, and they're building everything around it. So what does this mean in practice? Well, because the most important ingredient in whiskey, of course, is barley, Waterford Distillery is not buying unknown or untraceable barley from just a single source, but instead they've sourced their barley from 72 different local growers, including some organic and biodynamic growers too. And each farm's crop is kept separate from field to distillery, an enormously arduous task. And between both of these points, between the field and the distillery, they're storing the barley in what they call their cathedral of barley before being distilled then separately. So they firmly believe in Waterford Distillery that the differences in terroir from farm to farm, from field to field, are sufficiently different to yield very different whiskies, perhaps vastly different. So we might see a time when individual farms lead to individual whiskies consisting of their crop only. That's the idea and that's the big bet. And in Waterford, they've even hired an agronomist a role dedicated to fostering that relationship between the indiv individual farmers and also to strengthen the distillery's understanding of barley, this most important of ingredients. Now, the team at Waterford are quick to share that terroir and provenance, while central to their operation, are the journey and not the destination. It's what gets them closer to that end product. So their aim is to capture all the flavors of those individual terroirs and then to enjoy the differences that barley varieties and the farms and the fields give us but then to let those differences be enhanced by a very expensive wood policy. Super premium French oak, American oak, virgin oak. So they're bringing all of these maturing terroir-derived flavors back together to create, in their words, the most profound single malt ever produced, a grand van bottling, or the ultimate in complexity. What I love about Waterford Distillery is that they follow the story of their farmers all year round. They cover the growing, the ups, the downs of the harvest via social media. And they have fantastic images and videos showing us the people behind the whiskey. And every step of the process is documented, it's shared. There's nothing hidden. And from what I can tell, there's very little edited. It's just raw footage day after day on the Waterford Distillery social channels. So as a whiskey drinker, what does this mean to you? I mean, does it mean anything? I know for me, as both a story nerd and a whiskey lover, it does make a difference. And we're seeing this shift in consumer expectations in other areas like food production. We want to know where everything comes from. I mean, if we didn't know where our raw meat came from, would we eat it? Many wouldn't. And why should it be any different with whiskey? See, at the very least, it gives us the choice to make a decision whether provenance and terroir matters to us. But we have the choice. Now, it's going to be a few years before we'll see the fruit of those efforts. And the bet is a big one, an expensive one. But I think this effort will more than just pay off because it'll raise the standards for whiskey production and it'll educate customers on the process. And I think that's good for everyone. Now, an hour's drive west of Waterford City, uh, just on the Cork and Waterford border in Bally Duff, the focus on transparency and provenance continues. So in November 2018, Blackwater Distillery became the 21st active distillery in Ireland, a huge leap from the three that existed when I was growing up. And Blackwater Distillery is led by renowned Irish whiskey author and broadcaster uh, Peter Mulryan. And in 2015, Blackwater Distillery entered the market with Blackwater No. 5 Gin, what has become the most awarded gin in Ireland. And also their famous Barry's Tea Gin. The Irish love getting their tea into them, even if it's distilled into gin. The fact that probably helps. And not, not unlike Mark Rainier, Peter's focus is on ensuring that the customer has all the important information needed to make a decision about where they visit, what they buy, what they're actually drinking. And so to facilitate this, Blackwater Distillery is implementing a blockchain technology that when fully implemented will allow you to scan a bottle of whiskey on a shelf and instantly review the series of events that went into its production. You might see a photo of the farmer on the day the barley was harvested, maybe a video of the truck carrying the barley to the distillery, a webcam recording of the moment distillation began. You could see the ingredients, their source, and every other related event that will remove all confusion surrounding where a whiskey comes from, who distilled it, who aged it, who bottled it. Now, the drinking of it will still be down to you, though, but maybe you can take a selfie or something of yourself drinking it to complete the loop. But is this going too far? I mean, is there a danger that technology and these radical ideas replace 
what really are time old practices, not for a second. Transparency builds trust. Trust builds relationships. Relationships between stakeholders, between distilleries and customers, between farmers and distilleries. I mean, that can only be a good thing for the industry and for the consumer. And when I asked Peter why customers should care what he's doing, this was his response. Simple, he said. We put the customer at the center of everything we do. It's not about being clever or on trend. It's about being honest. We make gin, here's our still. We bottle our gin, here's our bottling line. We make whiskey, here's our still. This is how we make it, now it's over to you. So distillery managers and owners, if you're watching, I think there's an important message here. Tell us what you make. If you're not making it, tell us where it comes from. Tell us where it's aged, by whom, and give us, the consumers, information to make the right decisions for us. And if you don't tell us, we'll wonder why you're not telling us. And if you're hiding this, what else are you hiding? It's not difficult, but it does require intent. You need to want us to know everything about the product. And that's what Waterford and Blackwater Distilleries have committed to. Now, I'm sure I'm not alone in saying that I'll spend my money with those I trust more than those that have knowingly manufactured a consumer-friendly history or a fancy label that uh, hopefully will wow the customer sufficiently that they won't ask what's inside the bottle. What I love about both of these distilleries is that they're not trying to be fashionable. They're not chasing a fad. They're, not all, they're also not doing it the easy way. If anything, they're paying more homage to the practices of old than ever before, and they're letting us in to see. So their innovation is driven by their respect for the land, the growers, the truth, and the knowledge that the product will be better the more we understand those things. And don't let blockchain technology overshadow its purpose to help us connect, to help us trust, to help us see the age-old proven practices of harvesting, distilling, and maturation. Those things aren't changing. What we as customers get to see is, and that for me is the real innovation, not technology for technology's sake, but to pull back the curtain and perhaps make a pretty good whiskey along the way. I think it was Einstein that came up with the famous formula, vision plus technology plus ingredients multiplied by time plus honesty divided by angel's share equals great Irish whiskey. And don't tell me you don't trust Einstein. There are many definitions of revolution, but Mark and Peter probably wouldn't for a second embrace any of them. So I'll share my favorite definition and I'll oppose it upon them instead. A fundamental change in the way of thinking about or visualizing something. Look, call it what you like, but that's what's happening in Waterford. So what have these two groundbreaking distilleries got in common with Henry Downs Pub in Waterford City? After all, Downs's hasn't changed in years, but for my money, it's authenticity. Downs's survived when pubs all around it closed. They didn't have to change what wasn't broken. They knew their customers and what they wanted. They had a good product and they kept serving it. And isn't that all the distilleries are doing too? They're in Waterford, they're understanding their customers and serving up what they want. Which leaves me only one thing to discuss. Where did the E go? Both Waterford and Blackwater have cast the E in whiskey aside. Why? Well, the deeply held beliefs of the two contrarians in Waterford is that the E was only added as a marketing trick and that the authentic, historically accurate way to spell it is minus the E. Or they're saving on printing costs. Either way, I have no intention of arguing with them. There's also no E in innovation. Coincidence? I don't think so. And finally, there is one more revolution in Waterford, Revolution Bar, which happens to have one of the largest, if not the largest collections of Middleton whiskies publicly on display and for sale anywhere in the world, including a complete collection of Middleton Very Rare with every year from 1984 to the present day. Bring your checkbook. So Waterford has all the whiskey you need. What's stopping you from going? Slaunch it.